Hey, hey guys. Hey, thanks for being back with us today. Episode 84. Crazy, right? Um, I'm Jared. And in case you missed me last week because uh, my voice hated me and didn't let me talk, I'm back. And so you get to hear me a lot more. And so I apologize now because, I mean, let's be honest, Brian's voice is way more soothing than mine. It's that that Barry White sound that Brian has as he talks. I don't know about that. It's so, <laughs> so hot. It's so hot right now. So hot. <laughs> that Brian, he's so hot right oh, now. Oh, gosh, shoot. I'm touching my face. Sorry. Yeah, stop it. I was doing that earlier. I'm still, <laughs> yeah. I still grab my beard. I can't help it, man. It's my beard. It's over. Yeah. Just got to play with it's my over. beard. Yeah. Um, so we're all here. Um, the beauty of, of the podcast is all three of us are in different locations, so we don't have to, to, um, to congregate together. So that we are doing weird. our part guys. We're yep. doing our part during this. We are uh, self quarantining unhealthy trying time, time frame that we've got. Yeah. Um, we don't have a lot of news. Uh, we've got a couple topics here. They're both dealing with Disney, which is kind of cool. But then we do have three movies to talk about, so that's fun. Uh, let's get started here, news-wise. The first thing we're going to talk about uh, is they're doing a live-action Peter Pan, which, quite frankly, I don't remember hearing about. Um, I didn't remember this being one of the entities they were going to do a live-action one of. I'm not mad at that. Or surprised. Um, yeah, I'm not surprised. Yeah, I think this is a good one to do a live action if you're going to do one. Um, I mean, we've already had several renditions. It's kind of been done. Right? You've got, a you've got Hook and you've got you've got Pan. And I think we discussed there's one called Wendy that I, I didn't remember. Um, so you've had a couple live live renditions, not to mention some of the play versions of it. Uh, what was that one back in the day? Who, who well, played uh, the with, one uh, with Sandy? The... Si well, right. talking about with the, the lady, the Sandy lady Duncan? Peter Pan, Sandy, Sandy Duncan, right? Yeah. yeah, it was Sandy Duncan who played Peter Pan, right? Mama but... Sonoma, you should know this. Yeah, she, that's You're right. Like, this is your wheelhouse out here. Um, but they did that, and that was broadcast on TV, so that was kind of cool. Yeah. So they've had a couple different things with that. Um, but this one is going to be so. And again, Brian and I were looking at this, and and apparently it was going to come through Disney Plus like they did with Lady and the Tramp. Um, but now they're saying that it may actually get a theatrical release, which is interesting. Um, they've cast Peter and Wendy. Now, let me step back a little bit. Um, it's being directed by David Lowry. And David Lowry has brought us the remake of Pete's Dragon. Now, I personally haven't seen Pete's Dragon. I have heard good things about it. Mm -hmm. Um, and according to the article, they, they talk about it being one of, quote unquote, the best live actions that Disney has had uh, or believed by many. So I haven't seen it. I, I feel like I need to check it out now and just to kind of put my opinion in there on that, because that's what we do that's here. We, is do here. we do our opinions <laughs> on movies. Um, sort of our thing. Right. Sort of something we do. So it looks like this is going to be coming to, to theater and they've cast Peter and Wendy. Now um, they've cast it with, give me two seconds here, ever Anderson playing Wendy and Alexander Maloney playing Peter Pan. Now I don't know much about Alexander Maloney. He's not been in anything that I've seen. Um, he was in a Disney junior series called Claude. And then he was in another TV series called the reluctant landlord. And I, I don't know either one of those. Ever Anderson, who I didn't recognize the name, but as I've done a little research on her, kind of a cool little background for her. She played the young Alice on um, Resident Evil um, in the later uh, mm. later Resident Evil movies. I can't remember which Resident Evil movie it was. Uh, final Chapter, as a matter of fact. It was Final Chapter. She's playing a young um, Natasha Romanov in the new Black Widow movie. Um, and now she's playing Wendy in this. And the interesting part is Ever Anderson is the daughter of Mila Jovovich, uh, the um, uh, main antagonist, um, excuse me, or protagonist for the Resident Evil movies. Um, so that's kind of a cool little, um, a cool little nod to her. And I actually, it's funny, I was looking at Mila Jovovich's um, Instagram and she commented, she said, well, that cat's out of the bag now. I can finally say 
ever has been cast in in um uh both peter pan and and she's in the gonna be the new black widow movie and they they talked she talked briefly about how ever has wanted to be get into acting since she was like five and so this has been a great opportunity for her and and uh, rightfully so as a, a proud mother of of whatever uh, has been is going to be in because quite frankly both of these seem to be how uh, black widow particularly is obviously a big deal um this one i think could be a big deal so i guess yeah. the question comes into play where I, we may not necessarily know the actors with these but do you think that Peter Pan has an opportunity to to fall in line with the good ones? Um, you know, but when you take into consideration the director, when you take into consideration um, it's getting a theatrical release and and whatnot, do you think that this will be one you, you're excited to see, Brian? Wh what if, what's your opinion on Peter Pan? I guess in general. Um, before when I had just heard the headline and hadn't actually dug into the story and who was directing and all that stuff, I would say. Eh, probably not interested. Um, the fact that David Lowry is directing it, and I've seen a couple of things that he's done, and I've looked in his you know, back catalog of the things that he's done, even though I haven't seen them and I've heard good things about those. Like, this is a real, like, filmmaker guy. It's solid. It, he's not just, like, some hired hand coming in to shoot a shot-by-shot -shot remake of the animated version. At least I don't feel like that would happen with him at the helm. Like, he's a true, like, he's probably going to have... Um, writing input or story input or something like that and try to make something truly unique with it. So that puts that puts it up a couple levels, I think, for me, because I don't really want to see the animated version put on the big screen. Plus, I don't think you can do that uh, in 2020. There's some problematic aspects of the animated version that I don't think you could get away with nowadays. Um, so, yeah, I mean, prior so prior to knowing that he was involved and everything like that, I I wasn't that excited, but I think with his involvement, I, I think this could be this could be pretty good. Um, also, I think that shows confidence from Disney's side of, of things. If they're they were originally waffling on whether it should be Disney Plus or not, um, then they're like, you know what, let's just go all in and let's make it a theatrical thing. Um, then I think that shows that they're they kind of believe in the project too. Um, yeah, I think that definitely gives it a little credibility um from that standpoint so, and not to say disney plus, plus um you guys hadn't you guys haven't seen the lady and the tramp on disney plus have you the live action no, no i haven't we watched it with the kids um i don't think they really sit through live action movies that well in general so they were kind of they kind of lost interest but i didn't think it was bad um hmm. in terms of you know quality of movie and actually the cgi animal talking stuff was actually quite good for like a direct did it, to streaming did it feel movie. more kind of like tv movie ish no no no, no 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 i it, it so could have went to theater well i feel like it okay. could have gone to theater but maybe they were they held it back because they needed some original content Something. with disney plus <laughs> launch reason to subscribe besides the um, Mandalorian. but quality wise i don't think it would have been um you know a terrible thing but i also don't think that there was much you know uh desire in the marketplace to go see a live action lady and the tramp in the theaters i feel like they probably wouldn't have would have had a hard time making money and so throw it on streaming but it wasn't a bad movie quality wise either so um i think this has a chance as long as and i will say this with every live action thing that they do i will be interested as long as it's not shot for shot let's just remake the animated movie jason what do you think yeah i think um <clears throat> it's a pretty interesting series you know not series but um like the peter pan franchise i guess you could call it um, they've had some good stuff. I mean, Hook was kind of like, there was some goofiness to it at times, but I think overall it was a well-received movie. Um, so hopefully they come up with something a little more different than that um, and, and kind of reinvigorate the character. <clears throat> um, I don't know what their plans are for this, whether it's going to have a more serious tone or if it's going to be a little more lighthearted. You know, they haven't really said what their target is, have they? No, no, I would guess haven't. more serious tone. I think Peach Dragon even took that sort of like Which, realistic side of things. I mean, I think as, that as you can. If I think you that would be a dragon. good way to go. Um, is a more, you know, adult kind of uh, version. I think that might be a a, a better angle because I feel like maybe we've explored the other angle a lot more. Um, so if you were to try and just, I don't know, put a little more complicated plot into it, it might elevate it to a, a better um better place than it could if you just said like ah, it's you know 
throw some talking bears and whatever into the mix to kind of, you know, child it down. Yeah, I wonder. So, like, will it have songs? Will it be musical or anything like that? Will it go the yeah. Milan route and, and not do that at all? And just be a, a serious kind of story. I think yeah, just kind of know, an, we'll an adventure story kind of thing. With, uh, with Mulan, but I think that because of its historical nature, I think that's mainly why they went that way. Whereas with this, there's, there is no like Peter Pan. It's just a, you know, a, you're a kidding me. Yeah, I know. Sorry. It's shocking. We won't go into any other mythical creatures that may or may not exist, but uh, never, never land. Never, never happened. <laughs> that's terrible. This whole time, my child either that or I stop believing, and that's why I can't fly. Yeah, there so. it is, man. That's what it is. That is that is the problem, Dang, bro. <laughs> you need some of that pixie dust. I need some tink in my life. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I get it. Um, well, I I'm kind of excited for it. We'll see what happens. See how they do, and um, I, I'm curious about the other castings that they do in it, right? Because obviously Captain Hook's a huge portion of this too. So I'm curious who, to see who, who would you like to that. see as Captain Hook? Who could you <sighs> nowadays? Mm. Yeah, who would be a good one? That's that's a great question. Just Elba. <laughs> <laughs> well, he is hot. I wouldn't He's hate so it right now. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I wouldn't hate it. Oh, oh, uh, what's his name? Dominic Toretto. Uh... <laughs> Vin Diesel. <laughs> Vin Diesel. <laughs> I, I would hate it. That'd be great. I would absolutely hate it. The whole movie is about like ships, like on the sea, trying to get. He just he just wears a a white tank top the entire time instead of a pirate outfit, so he can show off the guns. He lives his life one league at a time. (laughs) Yeah, I there, man. I don't know. I I don't know who who we could who you could put in that. I'd have to think about it and picture them in a big beard. Patrick Stewart could be interesting. I think he could play a really good Captain Hook. Just bring yeah. back Dustin Hoffman and uh, the guy who plays <laughs> Smee in that. I can't remember. Think of what his name is. In Hook. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know, man. I'm gonna have to think about that. Let's bring that up next week. Table yeah. that. That'll be our 45 minute conversation. Who should play Captain Hook <laughs> in the new <laughs> Peter Pan live action? <laughs> Um, well, let's move on then, shall we? Let's talk more Disney. We're not done with the Disney route here. Um, Brian, I'm going to let you kind of lead this discussion just because from our previous conversations, (laughs) you were kind of excited about this one. You were excited about this, about this movie. And that is the, uh, the live action Mulan that's coming out. So sticking with the live action Disney movies here, uh, Mulan came out, had its premiere last night, if I'm not mistaken, the night so. before. Yeah. The 10th, um, 10th is when 10th. all these things are coming. Yeah. Out. Last night. Yeah. So, so there seem to be some pretty good things going on about it. What, what are we hearing? Yeah. Well, I mean, if you ask one person of our group, these are pretty um, lukewarm responses, uh, but don't talk about Jared like that. <laughs> We've had. These are very, I feel like I feel like this is a deja vu. We've had several of these uh, news articles for up and coming movies where you know they've had their premieres and people are posting tweets about them and their and their thoughts. Um, overwhelmingly, the tweets that I've seen on this have been pretty positive. Pretty there are, positive. Yeah. There are some that have said you know it's got some story problems, but ultimately I think it was an enjoyable movie. I don't think there's any that have come out and just said like yo this is bad don't yeah. go see it kind of thing um as always it's always a grain of salt with these things because these these are people that just got to see it Too first before lying. everybody else yeah. and <laughs> all the cast is there and there's a red carpet and all like so they could be just hyped up from you know the environment and seeing this movie first and stuff like that but you know, coming away pretty positive um with some of the responses especially for some there's some people um that I follow on Twitter. I have read on other websites that do reviews that kind of have the same taste as me in terms of like the things they like. I like things they don't. They, I don't. Mm-hmm. Um, and they like it as well. So I, I, I kind of feel like that's a good uh, barometer for me personally. Um, but as always, you know, like it doesn't necessarily mean this is going to be a 96% of Rotten Tomatoes and everybody's going to love it kind of thing. It probably right. will be, I don't know. 70s or 80s if i had to guess but um i mean it it could be some people you know they 
really enjoyed the animated feature and yeah and there's no music in well this. i was there's just no saying music. one major difference is there Rushu the dragon was a very popular no, part of that movie there's and no he eddie murphy movie absent you know yeah. none of that is in this. this is a very serious tone you know movie about this character and and you know what they kind of go through um it, but, a little bit of a like a love story kind of bit to ultimately it. like the main things everybody can agree on is the main the main girl who plays mulan y- yifei lu is mm-hmm. really right. good in this really well. um yeah. mm-hmm. the action is really good and the, yeah, cinem- the, and the cinematography are, is really good so i've heard the battle scenes are pretty impressive so yeah well um, and liu uh uh I can't. I'm gonna mess up the last name. Liu. Yeah, Mulan, the actress <laughs> who plays Mulan. Um, she's actually a martial artist, so that that's a huge part I think that helps, and not just a martial artist. But I, I was watching a, a snippet about the movie, and they were saying that um, not only is she a martial artist, but she's also a martial artist with um, sword experience. So like, okay. it, you know, she has the capability of doing this and the choreography fits in well with abilities. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited about this one, man. What do you, what do you guys think? Because as we've seen more trailers and, and we see these reactions from people that, and Jared, you and I were on social media recently and there were people talking about how they weren't interested in it. Um, and a I lot do of that, love trolling people on social media and a lot of that because, um, it's like a, a wushu kung fu type movie with people on wires and and you know floating kind of like a crouching tiger hidden dragon situation running on walls and floating and, and fighting yeah, and all that stuff what but you, if you look at l- 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 let's talk about that for a second so it has it's a changing tiger. it's changing it into this you know um I don't, typical is the wrong word but you know like a chinese fantasy epic kind of thing with with but, all those but that's details that's what it is i mean, I mean here's and the i guess thing. my is thought it... process is this this was a story prior to being a disney story like the story of mulan is is uh, in in chinese legend chinese legend is, is well known and so this is so before disney there was mulan um and so for my thought is okay so they're making a chinese epic well, it is. They're they're making it more like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon feel to the martial arts and everything, which won Academy Awards. Um, I mean, like, like this is not this is not a a problem that they're doing this. They're yeah. they're taking it and making it maybe more accurate and maybe better than what Disney did previously in the cartoon. And so. I can't complain in regards to it. You've got these people who, oh my gosh, it's not like the the Disney the cartoon. Uh, okay, because it's not originally a Disney cartoon, so back off. I mean, the way a couple of takes are: um, number one, is that any worse than say the Matrix with the kind of jumping around and the crazy whatever? And <clears throat> we we've all seen uh, the remake of The Lion King. And it's a pretty much shot for shot remake of the animated movie. Not completely, but for the most part. And I think we all agreed that it's the lesser of the two. So I, I think it's much better that they take an animated movie and, you know, stick to the theme, but but reinvent it in a meaningful way where it's a new movie. And, you know, hopefully it's a, a better movie in its own right. Um, and I think that's what they did here. And hopefully... You know, when we all see it, we agree with, you know, the, the majority here that are, are saying that overall it's it's a pretty good movie. So I don't know. Yeah, I'm definitely I'm I'm ready for it. Um we're just a couple of weeks out. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm looking forward to this one. Yep. Yeah. I keep thinking that it's earlier in the month than it actually is, but it's the twenty seventh. So we have we do have a couple of weeks to wait for yep. it, but I mean, but I will say we are further in the month, and I sometimes remember that we are. That's true. So. Close it in. I mean, Friday the thirteenth is this yeah. week. So it's this weekend. Weeks. Yeah. I will say that these reactions, like, while I always have to temper my expectations because I understand yeah. the situation where these reactions are coming from, um, it it makes me it does make me more excited to see it. Like I was already excited, but just like I'm I'm ready to go see it now, and yeah, you know. Yeah. See what I think. And I think the comments that like the variety of what they talk about in their comments, it they're very specific in the things that they like. And it, you know, it, it paints a pretty 
decent picture that it's probably going to be a good movie. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, we got a couple weeks and we'll get to review it. And Christina Aguilera has a song in it, I guess. She does too? have a song in it. Yeah. So cool. And it's not the same. It's, it's a different song, whole cool. new song. Yeah. yeah. So just like old times. See, there we go. Now it's yeah. like Disney right there. She sings uh toss a dragon to your Mushu. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> uh that's kind of the news we have guys that's it that's the news two disney things entertaining we love it um let's go on to some movie reviews here so i'm gonna start off here with the movie review um i saw and i know i spoke last week about braven um and braven was a movie that i saw on amazon prime um i saw a second one on amazon prime uh that movie is death wish now, this is the remake to the Charles uh, Bronson one back in the 80s or Series. whatever that was. There were <laughs> quite a few, there were a few of them, I think. Was there another one? There were. Yeah, like there was a. How many Death Wishes were there? Yeah, I remember the quite 1974 was the Charles Bronson version. Um, yeah. Um, so in this one, this is Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis plays a trauma surgeon. Um, so ER type surgeon, um, taking care of, you know, uh, traumas that come in and whatnot. Um, and he's obviously well off, excuse me. And he has a wife and daughter and they're living their lives and, and doing their thing. And they go out to dinner and, uh, the dinner happens to have valet parking. Well, as, as they're standing there talking about uh, different things that are going on in their lives, um, the valet hears, uh, hears these things. And when he goes and gets their car, he looks on their GPS, finds their address that is as home in their GPS, uh, takes a picture of it and sends it to somebody's. And one day, Bruce Willis is out of the house and his wife and daughter are in the house. His wife is played by Elizabeth Shue, by the way. And um, uh, he's he's at work and the daughter and mom are at home and three people break into the house um, and they end up uh, tying up the daughter, um, attempting to sexually molest her. And, and it doesn't go that route, but um, they get Elizabeth Shue to go open up the safe to give them, you know, things that are in there. And he has a watch and some cash and some other things. Um, and things go awry. The, the daughter and mother try to fight back. Um, and in so doing, uh, the mother gets shot and killed. Uh, the daughter is also shot, but not killed. And um, so they go into the hospital, and obviously Bruce Willis is working there. And he hears over the loudspeaker about a uh, you know, woman, aged, whatever, blonde. And he starts heading that direction to go do what he can do to help. And he gets stopped by another doctor saying, you, you don't want to go in there. And he's like, well, what's going on? And they, they tell him it's, it's his wife. Um, and that they couldn't sit and that, or that she was going to go to surgery. He, he needed to stay out of the way, let them work because, you know, he's obviously emotionally invested in it. Well, um, she ends up not, not living, um, and, and dies. Um, he becomes devastated at this point in time. Um, and he decides, uh, you know, there's cops that are, that are coming to, um, um, try to help where they can and to, to, um, to take you know, questions and, uh, to try to solve the problem. Um, and one of the cops is Dean Norris, um, who you probably don't know the name, but you would recognize him if you saw him shorter guy, balding, um, plays a cop frequently. He was, um, uh, Hank in Breaking Bad, I believe the DEA oh, agent yeah, Breaking okay. Bad. Okay, and okay. Then I think he was in the Under the, Under the Dome TV show, the one. Yeah, one I think you're right. in I think he was in that. He's in something um, right now too. I don't know what it is though. So Bruce Willis decides to go buy a handgun and and to protect himself and his daughter, and then actually ends up um, uh, seeing somebody uh, get carjacked, and he decides to take on the carjackers. And uh, he kills kills them, and he doesn't just kill them; he executes them. Like he stands over the one guy and like shoots him four or five times. Um, 
now they were shooting at him too. So they had weapons and were, and were shooting. Um, and so he feasibly defended himself up to a certain point. Um, his, his, uh, actions were recorded obviously, cause we're in a day and age where, uh, camera phones phone are everywhere, <laughs> but they never see his face. It's just some, some white guy, nondescript white guy, older white guy with a hoodie and the hoodie was, had the hood up and everything. You never see his face. Well, things progress and, and he gets to realize that this is, this is therapeutic <laughs> doing this. Um, and, and so he continues and, and the story continues along that route. And I won't, I won't go into the rest of it. Um, I, I gotta say this was, I've never seen the Charles Bronson version. Um, I do love Charles Bronson. And, and so I need to actually see it. Um, Charles Bronson is one of those tough bad guys that just kicks butt in everything that he does. And so, so is Bruce Willis. Like he falls into this, into this world. Now, Bruce Willis's character is not a previous military. He's not previous cop, nothing. He's just a dad. And, and you can tell as he progresses or as he starts off, he's not used to doing these things. He's not even used to shooting a gun. Like he shoots at a target and he's all over the place on the target. And, um, and things progress from there and, and he goes on. Um, I love Bruce Willis in this movie. Um, Vincent uh, D'Onofrio plays Bruce Willis's brother. Um, and he does a really good job in this movie. Um, I, I, I just overall, I enjoyed, I enjoyed what they did uh, with the movie. I enjoyed the plot. I enjoyed the route that it went. Um, is this a, uh, an Academy Award winning movie? Obviously not. It was from 2018. Um, but it's definitely a fun action movie um and to, to see how it ends and the, to see how things progress i i enjoyed it i enjoyed it quite a bit um i would recommend this movie um it again it's <laughs> it is an action movie and it's a bruce willis action movie so you keep but saying it's better than some of the older or the newer diehard movies like diehards were really good right at the very first one and two three four five they start going eh. this is like this is around two of the diehard. So you movies. keep saying action movie. Mm -hmm. Um is that what you like you mean like this is just an no, act, all out action movie. It's not like a you know, <sighs> he's like a, it's a vigilante thriller like you, it, like there's shootouts and stuff like that or is he yeah, he's just kind of tracking people and No, there's some fights them. that take place okay. and again, he's not a trained fighter and so that comes into play different things. A little um, sloppy. He's sloppy. It, you know what it reminds me of? Cold Pursuit. You know where where he? I wouldn't call that an action movie though. Well, and from, I, I guess that more along where he's line, a normal dude and he messes up and exactly yeah. yes that that's where it is. Um, this to me is I would say this is an action movie. It has more it has more action more um, more fights than what Cold Pursuit did, um, and so I think it is more along that line. Now that might be to the detriment as to why it wasn't as good as it could have been. Right. Had they flushed out the story a little bit more, seen his his character develop a little bit more, I could or I could see where didn't that really would make a slightly better try story. to bring up the drama as, so much as like just try to show a bunch of not really. I mean, there are like definitely that. moments like he does go to the therapist and there is a moment where the therapist says, you look happier, you look happier. And he's like, <laughs> you know, I feel really good. Well, and yes. so like you see that kind of I've thing been on a murdering spree. But uh, it definitely it, it's funny to see his interactions with the police officers, especially as things progress for him. Um, and I think maybe, again, that might be where you lose a little bit of them because. They're a little dumb or at least they're playing dumb. So there's that. Are they uh, on trying to figure out who this vigilante is that's correct. taking on all these guys? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And does he does he still do like his surgeon job or uh -huh. is he on like leave of absence? Well, he is on leave of absence for a portion of it, but mm -hmm. not not throughout all of it. Um, He does go back to work and everything. So. Yeah, okay. in fact, that comes into play in one of the one of the scenes, him being at work. Um, So it's a, it's an entertain. It's a fun movie. It's it's a nice movie. If you got nothing else to watch and kind of want to see some action turn this on you'll be fine it's free it's on amazon prime um so yeah i i i would say that's that's where this one lands cool yeah so there you go uh death wish on amazon 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 amazon, amazon. amazon. 
Amazon Prom. No, that's not it. Um, let's move on to a more recent movie, shall we? Recent movies. Uh, Brian, yeah, talk to us about uh, The Way Back, which just came out this past week. Yes, um, The Way Back. It stars Ben Affleck, or Affleck, excuse me. Affleck. Um, Affleck. That's a joke in my family that never gets old, um, calling it Ben Affleck. Um, It's directed by Gavin O'Connor. We've talked about him a lot recently doing Miracle um, and some other movies that he's done. Um, uh, The Accountant, also with Ben Affleck. Um, And it is about this guy who was a former really, really good high school basketball player at this Catholic university or Catholic uh, private school in California. Um, and after his career in high school, he had full ride scholarship offers to Kansas and turned him down, stepped away from the game and just walked away forever. Um, sort of had went through some rough times, um, became a, uh, con- he's a construction worker currently in this movie and has a problem with alcohol. You see him, there's a montage at the beginning of this movie. He's drinking on the job at work. He's drinking in his car on the way home. He's drinking when he wakes up in the shower in the morning and just on and on and on it goes um, as far as you know how bad his problem really is. Um, and one day he gets this call from uh, the, uh, the priest or father of the, um, I don't know, the head of the, the private school um, saying that their uh, their current basketball coach had a health related issue that he had to get taken care of, and recommended that they they keep him off the court and not that he would not come back because of that health issue. And they had an opening, and he thought of Ben Affleck's character, um, who is named Jack. No last name. Cunningham. In this. Oh, okay. On IMDb, it doesn't have his last name, so Jack Cunningham. Um, and uh, so he's like. I I've never been a coach before and I why would I do this and the more but he just keeps turning it over and over in his head while he, he goes through like a 54 pack of beer oh, yeah. like and literally. another montage they use montage in this um in this movie pretty well uh to sort of you know illustrate Progress time the the severity of his problem because the amount of times he opens that fridge and cracks another beer puts one in takes the freezer one out of the fridge puts, puts in, one the in the freezer, freezer <laughs> takes one out of the freezer with him <laughs> yes um so ultimately he decides that you know this might be a good opportunity for him to actually like do something with his life and and you know because he's not busy other than going to work and coming home he just sits at his house and drink even though he says he's busy all the time he's not um so he takes on this he takes on this challenge of coaching these kids who i don't think they win very many games and they are not very good and obviously you have the whole sports like story two and nine i think when he takes over yeah. or something like that and you have this whole sports story, uh, really a cliche at this point, I guess, in terms of sports movies. But, you know, taking the, the team that doesn't amount to much and then molding them into something that, you know, succeeds and starts to win games and you know go to the playoffs and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's, the, you know, the basic gist of the movie. Um, most of the movie, though, is not centered on the basketball side of things. I mean, it, it's it is in there for sure. And actually... Uh, the scenes that they do show in it, they get pretty in the weeds in terms of like the strategy of basketball and the different types of plays that you run and the, and you know, the mechanics of how a thing works instead of, you know, I'm just going to dribble down the court and shoot a three or whatever. Like they really get into the coaching aspect of it too, which I liked. Um, But the main focus of this movie is on Affleck and his um, struggles with the disease, the alcoholism that he has and his relationships with his, his, is they're still married but separated um wife and and various you know dramas and struggles that they he has personally in his personal life um and sort of how he potentially could overcome that or they you know get worse depending on if you've seen the movie or not not going to spoil it but you know can go one of those two ways as as it progresses um and so i really enjoyed that aspect of this movie uh i I'm glad that it wasn't just like a, a Mighty Ducks or a Glory Road for the bas- Disney basketball people that like that Carter. movie, uh, or Coach Carter or something like that. It, while it does embrace a lot of the sports movie cliches, I think just as many of them it it doesn't try to lean into. Um, there's so many times where they start a game, 
and so when I me- I mentioned that they use montage well, they also use freeze frames um, pretty well in this movie too. There's so many times when they start a game and Ben Affleck is like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Like, now you just keep doing that. We're going to win this. And then freeze frame, they lose by 30 or something like that. And they, they use that. To, they put the score on the screen. They use that for like a bit of comedy or something like that. But um, so I really liked, you know, how it was put together. And I think Gavin O'Connor did a good job. I, I think... Um, it might drag a little bit in the middle with some of the scenes, uh, you know, in between games and and doesn't kind of meanders a little bit. It felt like in the middle, but I think it brought it all all back together at the end. Um, and it also doesn't end like a typical sports movie, too. I think that's another another area where it, you know, bucks the cliches and doesn't really, you know, go in the route that you would expect, like going to the super bowl or whatever and winning the winning the basketball tournament or something like that it doesn't necessarily go all the way into that aspect of it so um, did you just say going to the super bowl and winning the basketball tournament yes i did that was on purpose okay just make it sure thank you um scoring a field goal um i guess they're they're field goals in basketball (laughs) um but anyway um i i like that it has your familiar your familiar sports movie elements, but it doesn't lean so hard into them that like it it's just a complete cliche of a movie. I think I think that aspect and it's rated R too, so it's not like a family friendly movie okay. as and, well. And it's rated R specifically for the language. The, yeah. <laughs> they drop the F bomb many, many times. In fact, it's actually part of the story the quantity of f-bombs that he drops because he is coaching a catholic school team yeah they have a code Um, of conduct like a zombie land counter that keeps ticking every time no it's not quite that meta they have um they have their their uh like a swear jar no the uh, team uh chaplain yeah the team team chaplain. chaplain so they have the father that goes around with them all the time and he pulls him aside at the very beginning he's like you gotta watch it he's like i'll try and Tamp he's like down a bit there, buddy. Harder, like, <laughs> yeah. Um, sorry, Brian. Go on. No, I mean I, that's that's kind of my thought. I really enjoyed this movie. Um, I didn't. Um, I don't think it would, other than maybe Ben Affleck with an acting nomination, because I think he did really, really well. You could tell he pulled from personal experience a lot in yeah, this movie. That's a big a thing. A lot is, from it. Like he, you he felt almost the lost struggle. His role. Like that was one of the things was, you know, he personally is going through a similar issue uh, with abuse and he had to go into rehab and he had to really reassure them that, you know, he was committed to this project because it was almost at the point where, you know, they were going to drop him and and even go somewhere else. The subject matter, even if he had gotten over it and the subject matter of this movie, I got to imagine like how easy it would be to relapse or something if you're if you're going just through all watching, this just for this role and then just for the role yeah the quantity of alcohol that character consumed yeah. was ridiculous mm-hmm. um yeah i gotta agree with brian on this man so to me ben affleck is one of the best actors of our generation 100 percent believe that i i don't know if there's a movie i shouldn't say that like what's that one that he did with j-lo or armageddon with, uh, jiggly you know, i oh, loved armageddon jiggly oh, jiggly or whatever jiggly, that was, yeah. <laughs> jiggly. Um, that's a different movie Jack. oh right right that's a review of that movie uh so you know most movies that he's done let's put it that way i really love his character and i don't care what anybody says i thought he was a fantastic batman um at me all you want i liked his physicality as batman i don't, I don't blame I him wouldn't... i blame the script he was given yeah I I don't argue that I but I think he as as I think he was a fantastic Bruce Wayne and I thought he was a good Batman. I like the idea of like a tortured, you know, yeah, sullen yeah. Bruce Wayne that they had in those movies. You know, I think back to when I saw him in Goodwill Hunting, which to me is one of my favorite movies of all time. Like I, I Goodwill Hunting is my probably my top 10 easily. Um and he was one of the reasons why. Um so I thought he was fantastic for this role. Um, His personal experience obviously pulled into it. Um, I I thought his, his work with the, the the boys was awesome. Um, I really enjoyed this movie. I didn't feel the slowness that Brian may have felt in the center of it. Um, I think to me, I, I think it lended to the development of him as a character 
so I, I don't agree with Brian on that, but I think that's a nitpick because I think we I, we both really enjoyed the movie. Yeah, it didn't um, hurt the movie for me. I don't. Yeah, I, I didn't mean nitpick on you. Nitpick me, nitpicking your yeah. comment. Um, and so it, it just it was a great movie. Um, I really recommend this movie. It was better than I expected it to be. Um, I but I enjoy these types of movies. You know, when I think of of um hardball with keanu reeves that's another one that to me is very similar to this um of the tortured you know guy the, with his problems and coming in um uh, you know miracle all these sports movies I, i'm a sports fan and so this I, I i want sports movies to do well but this one did better than i expected it to now um, we saw this with a group of people um do you know at all like hey how everyone else sort of enjoyed uh, it. Brian generally. and I saw this movie together and yeah. this may be one of the first ones we've seen together. I was trying to remember <laughs> back if we'd done it before. So we did get a chance to see this together. Um, I, so I, I got positive reactions from most people that I talked to on the group that we went with. Yeah. Um, um, my wife enjoyed it. I don't think my wife was very leery about it. She didn't really want to see this movie at all. Um, and I, from my understanding is she enjoyed it and she can correct me in, uh, in discord or in uh, Twitch chat, um, if she would like. And, but I, I think she enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, and it seemed that the audience enjoyed it. Like I, I felt the audience had some good laughs, um, through it, um, at the points when it, when it needed to be, um, a good laugh. So it was, it was a good movie, man. I, I recommend this one. I recommend this one. If you get a chance to go see it, do it. Yeah. Um, it's not one of those that you have to see in the theater per se, but it definitely I thought was a good movie to see in the theater. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed it quite yep. a bit. I think um, Gavin O'Connor has is, is sort of done himself well with these sports movies. Warrior is another one that I forgot that he did, oh, which Warrior is another is fantastic, fantastic movie. movie. So Warrior. as someone who doesn't Holy even cow. like MMA or anything like that, like I was just and I love MMA by that, that. <laughs> legit. Yeah. So um, definitely go see it. Good movie. Cool. Good deal. Thanks, Brian, for your review. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Next, Jason, um, I'm going to have you talk about the other movie that all three of us had to see um, because you didn't see The Way Back. So so I should say the movie that all three of us got a chance to see. And that is the Pixar's latest release um, in Onward. Tell us about Onward, Jason. Yeah, so Onward is a new friend. Well, not a franchise, but a, a new uh, theatrical release for them. And it's based on a, a world kind of filled with mythical, magical creatures. But um, time has gone on and they've sort of modernized and, you know, it's become more of a society kind of like our own. And people have sort of lost their magic. You know, originally there were wizards and, and learning magic was uh, it took effort and you had to work at it and people began to develop things like electricity. And, and, and as those things kind of came on, people realized that, Hey, that's a lot easier than trying to conjure up a fire spell to, to get light. So because of that, they just sort of evolved to not know magic anymore. And, you know, creatures like, you know, pixies that, you know, used to flutter <laughs> around on wings, stopped flying. They didn't know how to use them anymore. Cause they, they, didn't just, care they anymore. just gave up, yeah. you know, they, they had modern technology. They bikers. You know, centaurs start driving cars and say, like, I don't need to gallop like I got a car. <laughs> so that so the world kind of just evolved into pretty much a similar world to what we live in now with modern technology and, you know, TV and whatnot. Um, but there's still mythical creatures. You know, there's, uh, you know, trolls and, you know, goblins and uh, all kinds of, you know, the classical, when you think of like Dungeons and Dragons, you know, yeah. the, the kind of creatures you would see in, in any given world. Um, basically, those are the people of this world. And it, it mainly, the story f focuses on a, a family and in particular, uh, two brothers. Uh, it's uh, Ian Lightfoot and his brother Barley. And Ian is played by uh, Tom Holland, who everybody should know from uh, Spider-Man. And uh, Chris Pratt plays uh his brother barley <laughs> who's um kind of comes across as like a, a jack blackish character i would say you know he's you know kind of like the the older brother he's a little on the goofier you know rough on the edges side but heartfelt and meaningful drives a 
van with a spray painted decal. <laughs> <laughs> There's a van with like, you know, it's like total like you think 80s kind of van kind of person with like the mu- big mural on the side. And, you know, he's big into like, you know, their world equivalent of D&D. And, uh, you know, but the, the main story kind of focuses a lot on uh, Ian Lightfoot, which is the the younger brother who's he's kind of the awkward kid. He's, you know, he's just about turning 16 and, you know, he's learning to drive and not doing so well. And he's not very good at making friends. And it's kind of like his struggle sort of, um, you know, this, this family lost their father, uh, when they were very young, um, before Ian was born and the older brother, you know, he had a short time with his father, but he did know him. And basically, the story kind of revolves around it's now the 16th birthday of Ian, the younger brother. And, you know, he has a rough day. Things don't go so great. Um, and his mom, you know, or their mom trying to cheer them up, remembers that their father had left a present for them um, as sort of like a gift, knowing he was going to pass. And, you know, they come to find out that it's this, uh, this wizard staff. His father was one of the last people that kind of new magic and um you know it still exists in the world but not not really well known not not many people practice it if any um so it's kind of like a like a dead thing so they come across this this staff and they they have this uh parchment that kind of tells them you know a basic story about how you know they could bring their father back for one day 24 hours um and this of course excites ian because he's you know, very, uh, I'm trying to think of the right word, but like he, it's, he's very affected by the fact that he has never met his father. It's, it's clearly taken a toll on his life and impacted him and just everything about him. He's, he's, it's the one thing he's always wanted was to just know him, you know, meet him, spend any kind of time with them. So this, this proposal to potentially meet him is, you know, an amazing, you know, reality. So they, they attempt the, uh, this this kind of incantation and they don't really have much luck the older brother he he's aware of magic based on the game that he's played which is theoretically based on like lore and history so he treats it as a bible but um you know no one in the rest of the world really knows they just think it's like he's playing dungeons and dragons and he's a little bonkers um so he tries it doesn't really have much success um so they kind of give it up a bit and then uh ian kind of gives it a go and apparently magic is one of those things where like some people have the knack and some people just kind of don't or they have to work a lot harder at it um and he gets a reaction um and basically you know his father starts to come to life um things happen doesn't quite go well and basically only half of his father comes to life the lower half so so his father is basically a pair of legs um and not much else and they have 24 hours to to find uh, another object that would help them restore the remainder of him uh, before the 24 hours is up. And then, you know, he'll disappear forever again. Um, so it very quickly becomes a, a journey against time to to try and find, you know, another one of these uh, like crystals to to complete that process and, and be able to see their father. Um this is a very emotional story. I think the the characters were very well done. Um, you really see the relationships between, <clears throat> excuse me, the the two brothers and uh, the mother, and you know the the journey goes on with the two brothers trying to, you know, find this this object. And in it, you know, they spend a lot of time with their, you know father as much as they can they communicate as best as they can being that he can't hear them um and he's just kind of there and on a dog leash (laughs) yeah they put him on like one of those tractable dog leashes to keep him straying away and you know there's a lot of great humor in the movie and you know even the side characters you know there's uh is it a manticore manticore yeah manticore Mm -hmm. um the, the this uh this particular uh person who's it is it octavia spencer plays yeah. Corey, Corey the manticore and uh i think i think the cast is excellent in this movie i really liked everybody 
um, the stepfather, uh, played by Mel Rodriguez, um, Colt Bronco. <laughs> uh, just it, it's a really like this movie. I wasn't sure how to make it uh, originally. Like I was I was intrigued by it, but I kind of felt like this might not be one of the better Pixar movies for some reason. And I got to say, I really enjoyed this movie a lot. Um, I thought the story was excellent. Um, very heartfelt. Um, you know, on the like the Toy Story line of like, you know, when you think it, I think Brian was it Toy Story three or four that you really felt did a, a good job with the emotional three in particular, of, uh, like the uh, ending of three. I, I feel yeah, like I thought, yeah. it, I thought it was three that and it, and like I kind of get that vibe out of this where like they really did a good job with pulling out um, the feelings of of both brothers and, you know, the older brother and his feelings of inadequacy and, you know. The, the struggles that they go through as a family and you know the mom is a single mom trying to raise two kids and they run off on this adventure and now she's frightened to death because you know this horrible thing could happen to them and you know because it's it's a magical world that has kind of forgotten about magic they they also don't know if any of this stuff is actually going to work until they kind of try it and see what happens and you know the the kind of ups and downs that go along with that but um man they just i thought this was an excellent movie um anybody would enjoy this movie whether you're a kid a family i think i mean the crowd really responded to the movie um you know the jokes hit and everybody laughed and you know i think that you could tell there were the more tender moments you could hear reaction from people and at the end of it you know people kind of cheered a bit even um it was a really just uh i think it was a solid movie and uh i i mean anybody that likes animated stuff you know you're gonna love this um and even if you're you're not necessarily a big animated movie fan i think you'd still enjoy this quite a bit it's just it's a really good story and um i think it's a meaningful one because there's a lot of families out there that are like kind of single parent families and I think kids would uh, relate to that very well that are in that kind of situation. So I don't know. What did you guys think? So let me preface this by saying all opinions that come out of my mouth right now are my opinion and no one else's. And <laughs> so <laughs> I, 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 um, I, I get where people would really enjoy this movie. Um, it was not one of my favorites. Really? And and for a very specific reason. Okay. Um, and I accept that that's my reason and it's nobody else's. Okay. So I I I a hundred percent accept both of your reviews because Brian, I gotta imagine you're gonna enjoy it too. So I, I accept all of don't, this. We don't know that. what we don't my know review that. will be, sir. He could he could hate okay. this. Okay. I I don't do sad movies well. Oh, this okay. is the whole up thing. We have this problem up. with up. Uh, yep. Okay. I hate it up. I, I mean, that's. I'm, I'm not that, a I mean, fan of this. Is this is? I'm not a fan of Inside kind of Out. Oh my some, god, um, that's but, top tier Pixar. I know it is. I know it is. I know it is. And I'm here's the thing. And I don't want to. I don't want to come. Who doesn't think these topics should be talked about? Because I 100% do. And there are people who 100% need these movies, right? They need up, they need inside out, they need onward by all means. Okay. I, I, I don't take anything away from that. My own personal opinion though, is I, I just am not, I'm, I'm not a sad person and, and I, I don't enjoy the movies per se that have the, the it's too emotional. Don't the like serious... to be made to feel. I don't, and I, mean, I accept that. Maybe it's a valid, it's a valid that's, thing. Because, that's not, you know, you know it, there are movies that when I go watch them and, and I accept that there's going to be some emotion with them, right? I watched a, a four-minute video on Facebook today about a 59-year-old chimpanzee that wanted to give up on life until it saw the person that raised it back in the seventies. And it remembered that person and Did loved that person. It and to you give saw the life? joy in that chimpanzee's face. That was an emotional moment. I knew exactly what I was getting into. I saw that movie or that video and a tear came down and I, I embraced it because I knew what I was getting into. Okay. So for me, onward is one of those movies that I don't, 
I don't necessarily, um, I, I don't go into it wanting to see the sad aspects of it. Okay. With that being said, the acting was fantastic. The people who, the, the ca- choice of cast was amazing. I, I enjoyed all of them. There were parts that I thought were great. Um, uh, you know, the ending, to be quite honest, was one of my favorite parts of the entire movie. Um, and so I enjoyed that. Um, but to me, it wasn't my favorite Pixar movie. Um, I, I, um, and even, well, to, to the point of what I'm talking about here, Toy Story 3 was not my favorite Toy Story movie of all four of them. And I thought four was great. One was great, but, but three was not one of my favorites. So it just, again, yeah, just the subject it matter is my personal preference. And I know that I am not in the majority with this hundred percent. So forgive me, everybody who disagrees with me. I apologize. I just, it's just my, my opinion on it. And it's how I portray movies. I go to a movie um, I go to a movie to be entertained. Um, that's 99% of why I go to a movie is to be entertained. There are movies I go to specifically because for other functions, like uh, uh, what was the movie, Brian? Um, they Shall Not Grow Old, right? That was a documentary about World War One, and I knew. So my opinion, not my favorite, but I get why other people enjoy it. Okay. Brian? I love this movie. Um, yeah, I wouldn't. I get it, buddy. I, get I wouldn't it. put it like I don't think it's top tier Pixar, but I think it's just right below top tier Pixar. Um, I wouldn't say it's mid or low. Like it's not Cars level Pixar. Um, I don't like Cars all that much. Um, but I mean, it's better than any DreamWorks movie. Basically, Cars is, but I. I don't, I don't rank it highly on the Pixar. I mean, list. I think the message, right? That's that's the key. It's like this has more of a. It's not just cars running around and being funny. It's, yeah, anthrop- more anthropomorphic a, cars. Yeah, doing stuff. They're really they're trying to like push a. And I message. There's not like you don't see a whole lot of kids movies like this that try to delve into topics of right. like a f- a family who's dad doesn't isn't there anymore and the brothers don't really get along and they go on this journey and you know they start to grow together and you know really come to appreciate each other for who they are and and stuff like that you don't see that like there's even a character in this movie it's a very small thing but i appreciate it for what it was one of the one of the mythical creatures in here um was using was using two canes like they had um like yes. multiple sclerosis yes. as one I of saw the, that People, and and I, I was like, like that's so that's such a cool little job. thing like it's, it's not even something it, they call out or whatever he's just a character no, it's just in it's the just movie there and it exists imagine being the kid that's like that that you see in the movie and hey look i can yeah. be a pink troll in the movie like just like to that. acknowledge that it, you know yes you exactly and you matter um yeah. So I really enjoyed this one. I thought that the way they, the way that the magic worked in this was pretty cool. Um, they get some pretty good laughs with the things that they can do with the magic, um, particularly <laughs> as he, as uh, Ian becomes more adept at it. You know, later on in the movie and the stuff that they do, and then like the the whole finale part where mm-hmm. you've had this entire movie of him kind of learning how to do magic, and then he puts a lot of it together, the things that he learned um, in order to you know do whatever he has to do in the finale. I thought that was really cool. Like they, Hey, they, all these little spells and stuff that, you know, his brother knew that he's, you know, finally able to, you know, do the Perform. things with and stuff like that. Um, pretty cool. Um, I agree with you. All the cast I really, really liked, um, Tom Holland. I don't know that I've ever heard him be a voice actor person in he's anything. A really well one with the spies in disguise. Smith. I'd, we, I never stuff. saw it though. So I don't know. I didn't either. Um, but Chris Pratt can obviously do. I honestly, off the top of my head, I can't think of anything I've heard him in before either. But he can do voices really well. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think this is while not like the top tier Pixar, I think it's just right below that. Um, that for me, and I the kids really enjoyed it. Um, they were scared a little bit, but you know they're kind of at that. My daughter's kind of at that age where hey, I think the kids to see it. Yeah, we took the kids. Um, oh, nice. 
they and they sat through the whole thing they didn't try to leave her even with the <laughs> there's like a dumb little simpson short at the beginning which i didn't really care for i or... liked the simpson short i was i, I mean as a person it, with little kids it's like i thought it was fun i know that they always do the shorts in front of pixar movies but it's like we already had to, we even came in late to the previews strategically because we knew that there'd be 25 minutes of previews that were just sitting there. Yeah. And then we have to sit through the short and then the movie. So I didn't really care for it, but um, the kids, the kids enjoyed it. Um, my son was even clapping at the end when the, <laughs> the credits started rolling and, uh, and all that stuff. So um, yeah, I think even, even the young ones can enjoy it. Uh, obviously adults like ourselves who uh, are very sophisticated and you know highly knowledgeable about film minus jared uh can enjoy this movie as well so yeah definitely go see it if you fall into any of those categories minus if you think like jared and if you don't like very you don't like emotional to feel. movies yeah. this is an emotional movie yes like, for sure there's some roller coaster moments like if that's if you know, if your heartstrings get very easily torn it's out, it's not quite up level. Like first ten minutes of up level, I w I wouldn't say. Um, that, like that first ten minutes of up, just like kills most Devastating. people. Devastating. Yes. Devastating. Um, it's not quite to that level, but yes, it. Jared most of the story. is still emotionally. <laughs> I still go to therapy later. Because of up movie. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> but yeah, it was that was a hard movie, man. Because and I think the hardest part about up since we're, since you brought it up, um, I, I didn't know it was coming, never saw it coming. And so I think it it just knocked into me and I'm like, son, what? I didn't see it coming. So yeah. anyway, so there you have it onward. Um, those that have emotion, go see it. Those that are void of emotion like me don't. I mean, just don't. Just kidding. Uh, that's that's not accurate. Um, so. Yeah, uh, that's it. There's our movies for the week. Wow. Thanks, guys. Thanks for being here. I appreciate it. As always, Brian and Jason, you guys are the bestest. I don't care what your moms say about you. I think you're both amazing. Thanks, man. Um, <laughs> we appreciate everybody who came out. As usual, we're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, and Spotify. So pretty much everywhere you can find us. Um, subscribe to us, no follow excuses. us, like us, do all of those things on all of those social media. That way we look way more awesome than what we do. Um, we appreciate it. We appreciate those that came out. We had some new people out today, which was awesome. We appreciate you guys joining us. Um, and we look forward to being with you next week on another edition of the noodle cast peace out goodbye go wash your hands <laughs>